Howdy, AP Precal. It's Ms. Kasha. This is the second video for this year on um, topic 3.9, inverse trig functions. And my last video that I'm uploading is my 500th video that I've uploaded to my YouTube channel. And I meant to say it in that video. So this is now video 501. Yay? No, I'm just kidding. Um, so bummer, I forgot to celebrate that one. But here we go. Uh, by the way, subscribe watch lots of videos, all that kind of stuff. Um, we are continuing on with inverse trig functions, so I am assuming that you have watched the other videos, and we are on number three of my examples. Okay, the graph has two transformations of the inverse cosine function. So if um, the inverse cosine I had written, um, I had drawn the parent function right here on my, in my process of transforming it, um, and so I can note, I notice that this has been shifted up, um, but it's also been oops, stretched apart, um, so we're getting out here to 2 and negative 2. So it's got a, a horizontal, I would say that's a horizontal stretch. It's been dilated by a factor of 2, um, and then it was shifted up. Well, normally it was at pi over 2, but now it got shifted up to pi. So it was moved up pi over 2 units. So let's see if we can write that. This was cos inverse cosine, so what did they tell us? Um, I am noticing that they like to use theta. Oh, no, but we wouldn't use theta here. So, okay, my bad g of x is equal to, yeah, because the inverse cosine, we wouldn't want our variable to be theta because theta is typically an angle. But like if you have, you have cosine to the negative one of x, x is just a, a variable, but this is giving you an angle measure is your answer. So your, in this case, your y is your angle. So a lot of times in AP Precal, I've seen stuff like cosine of theta, which is fine because that's cosine of an angle. But if you write y equals cosine to the negative one of x, the angle measure is actually here. So it wouldn't make sense to put theta there, in my opinion. Okay, um, so back to here. G of x is going to be, we didn't have any sort of vertical stretch, so we just have inverse cosine um, theta, uh, but we did stretch it horizontally. So this is gonna be x over two, and then we shifted it up, pi over 2. Okay, so let's just double check. Let's plug in 2. So g of 2 um, is going to be cosine to the negative 1 of 2 over 2 is 1. Mm -hmm. Inverse cosine of 1. So if I think unit circle, um, cosine the cosine value on my unit circle is equal to 1 at 0. Okay, so 0 plus pi over 2 is um, going to be pi over 2, which is right here which is a good sign. Okay, that tells me, uh, just for grins, let's just try another one. Let's try, um, uh, well, zero. Okay, so cosine to the negative one of zero plus pi over two. Cosine to the negative, um, cosine, we have a cosine value of zero at pi over two, so pi over two plus pi over two is pi. I'm feeling pretty comfortable with my answer. Okay, the next one, they're giving us an inverse of tangent, and they're asking us, let's see, uh, the graph has a transform. The graph has a transformation of the graph of the inverse tangent function. What is the function that defines g? Okay, so here's what I notice: we have the same asymptotes, and we are passing through. Um, this point normally is here, um, but it's been moved. And do I notice anything else? I can't tell. They didn't label too much else, but it looks like halfway through here, we're, we're at one unit up. I don't think there was any sort of um, a horizontal stretch or compression. If so, they would need to give me more information, in my opinion. Like if I expect them to, if I expect my students to see that this has been pulled apart this way, um, I'd have to label more information. But my asymptotes didn't change, so, um, so we didn't have any vertical stretch or any vertical shifts. So all I see is a horizontal shift uh, to the right one. So this is g of x is equal to inverse tangent of, what did we say, to the right one means x minus 1. There we go. Um, if we wanted to, we could say arctan. To be honest with you, Sometimes I just say arctan because it's easier to type <laughs> rather than trying to raise it to the negative one power, but there's same difference. Okay, the function um, f is defined by uh, 2 tangent x over 3, where um, we live between negative 3 pi over 2 and positive 3 pi over 2. Find the inverse. Okay, um, so basically what this has done is it has, um, oh, okay. 
we're looking at, we've, we've had a vertical stretch of two, which, not going to lie, I find that kind of annoying with tangent because you've probably seen in my other videos, but all I care about with tangent is that you know where the inflection point is and where the, where the asymptotes are. And so I don't particularly care where this point is. And so if you move this point, if you stretch this point by a factor of two, well, and then stretch this point by a factor of two, okay, it does, it's not the same graph, but it's kind of boring, not going to lie. Anyway, but I didn't write this problem, um, and so they put a 2 here. Um, what they're doing is this 3 gives it, makes it, um, pulls it um, horizontally. I would say it's a horizontal stretch by 3. Um, it's dilated by a factor of 3. The new period, tangent has a period of pi. Um, so pi over b, so pi divided by 1 third is the same thing as pi times 3, 3 pi. So all of my asymptotes got pulled out by a factor of 3. And so this is my first. Um, basically, my function here used to have asymptotes at pi over, negative pi over 2 and, pi, and positive pi over 2. But now they got pulled out to negative 3 pi over 2. And then here's the next asymptote here at positive 3 pi over 2. And then the 2 stretches this and makes it go down faster. But like I mentioned before, I think that's kind of lame. But nobody asked me. OK. I haven't even answered the question they asked. They said, find the inverse. But so basically, when they're restricting this domain, they're just keeping me within, um, keeping it to one period of it so that when we take its inverse, its inverse will be a function. All right, so switch x and y. x equals 2 tangent of y over 3 divided by 2. Um, take the inverse tangent, so undo both sides, or take the arctan. I just felt like writing arctan is equal to arctan of that. just gives me y over 3, and now I have to get rid of the 3. And so the inverse tangent, f to the negative 1 of x, so I'm using their notation, is equal to, I didn't give myself enough space, 3 tangent to the negative 1 of x over 2. You'll notice this 3 was a horizontal stretch by 3. This 3 is a vertical stretch by 3. If those things, if what happens horizontally doesn't happen, what ha do the same thing vertically, then you messed up somewhere along the way. This was a um, a vertical stretch, and now this is a horizontal stretch. So this tells us we're doing the right thing. Uh, okay, let's see. Find those. Okay, I think I may already have these problems I pulled from stuff I've taught the last handful of years. Um, to save time, I may go look and see if I already have videos and put links to that. Um, if not, I'll be back for another video. All right, good luck. Go practice. Subscribe. Keep watching my videos. All that fun stuff. Uh, good luck.